Hello and welcome to this video in which I'm going to be demonstrating a new piece of software, Mapping the European Union 2019. This application is an example of a piece of 3D mapping and data visualization software made by Information. In this application you can explore the geography, politics and social demographics of the European Union and you can also find out about the members of Parliament, the candidates for upcoming elections and also various statistics about the nations in and around Europe. So having just started the app we can now see we've got a view of the European map and I'm just going to press the enter key to go down to the ground and start exploring. So let me just change the viewpoint so we can get a better view and I'm just going to introduce the controls for this app and start looking around. So just using my mouse I can turn my head to look around the map and using the arrow keys on my keyboard I can start to walk around. So over here we have Paris, over here we can see the UK, back towards Belgium and Germany and the Netherlands and then looking towards the south we can see Luxembourg and Switzerland. So just navigating the map using my arrow keys and my mouse to walk around and look around. I can also press the space key if I'd like to jump although it's perfectly okay to walk across the sea. It's also been made for gamepads, so if you'd like to navigate using a PlayStation or Xbox style controller, you can use a gamepad and just using the left and right thumbsticks you can walk around and look around. So looking around the map you can see that it's shown in different colors depending on whether each country is a member or non-member of the European Union. So the blue countries are EU members and orange countries are non-EU members. And you can see over in the distance we've got the edges of the map. The map itself extends beyond the boundaries of the EU and Europe and it shows the western side of Asia as well as the northern side of Africa and it extends as far as Greenland in the northwest. I'm just going to change the camera view. We can use the shift key to zoom out slightly. So instead of looking around from a first person perspective, I can now get this third person perspective, which gives me a little bit of a better view of the map. I can see further into the distance and see exactly where I am. Also in the bottom right hand corner, we've got a little mini map which shows me where I am from a bird's eye view. And if I was to press shift again, I can also zoom out and navigate as this arrow, which allows me to move around a little bit more quickly, just heading here across the Mediterranean past Cyprus and over into North of Africa. And then if, I'm pre if I press the shift key one more time, I'm gonna zoom out and get a full map view. So you can see there the entire extent of the map with Greenland up in the northwest, Norway over in the northeast, and then you've got the northern countries of Africa along the south. I'm just going to press shift one more time, that's going to take me back down to the ground where I can continue exploring. And there's also a little compass in the top right hand corner, so if I turn this way I can see that I'm now heading north, and likewise south. So that's the map. I've started us off in geography mode, so this is basically a free exploration mode. In geography mode you can see all of the main cities and settlements around the EU and you can see the capital cities, the flags of each country and you can learn about the geography and the lay of the land. Now I'm going to introduce the different modes um, and all the statistics that are available within those modes. So just pressing enter on my keyboard I'm going to switch to the first one which is country mode. So you can see over on the right hand side I've got this information panel which gives me a little bit of detail about country mode and what you can explore here and then it gives me a, lift, a list halfway down with the five different modes. So the first one is view national statistics that's country mode and I'm just going to press control to change my viewport and start looking at these statistics. 
So you can see over on the left hand side, I've got a list of data and statistical information about the country that I'm currently in. I'm standing on France at the moment. I'm just going to zoom out with the shift key so I can see exactly where I am. And you can see that whichever country I walk onto changes to orange and it also updates the information in that panel on the left. So let's just have a look at what statistics we've got there. At the top we've got the population of the country, the land area, and then underneath that we've got a little bit of information about the relationship with the EU. So you can see that France has been a member since 1957. It has 74 seats in the EU Parliament. Population per seat underneath that. Then you've got the voter turnout from 2014 and the gender split from 2014 amongst MEPs. Underneath that we've got some other statistics mostly coming from the United Nations but also the World Bank. Human Development Index which is a index of human prosperity which includes measures of education, health and financial prosperity. Underneath that you've got the Gini Income Equality Index. This is a measure of income equality and shows the spread of income distribution between the richest and the poorest within a country. We've then got the GDP per person, also the unemployment rate, the UN Education Index and the Gender Inequality Index. These are both United Nations indices measuring education and gender inequality. Underneath that you've got CO2 emissions per person and you've got the percentage of energy that comes from fossil fuels within each country. Beneath that we've then got the good country ranking. This is a fairly new index uh, which attempts to measure how well each country is doing on the global stage across a number of different categories. You can find out more about that by pressing the B key on your keyboard. So you can see down the bottom there it says press B to read about the good country index in your browser. And at various points when you're exploring this app, pressing the B key will open your browser to different pages. So you'll see some prompts about what you can view in your browser at any particular time. I'm just going to switch now with the enter key into mode number two, which is statistics mode. Whereas country mode focuses on one country at a time, statistics mode allows you to see the whole map and to compare between different nations. So you can see here it starts us off on the left hand side, it's giving us information about population per MEP. I'm just going to press control to change that info panel and you can see on the left hand side now it tells me what statistic I'm currently exploring. It gives me a little bit of information about how to interpret that data and some information about the data source. Underneath that you've got a list of the different statistics that are available. So using the Alt key I can cycle through those different statistics. So I'm just going to do that now. You can now see we've got the 2014 election turnout, percentage of female MEPs, Human Development Index, Gini Income Equality Index, GDP, Unemployment Rate, CO2 Emissions, fossil fuels, gender inequality index and the UN education index. And then just going back to the start, if I press the tab key on my keyboard I can also change the style of the visualization. So the default is from green to red but we can also use shades of green, kind of flesh tones from yellows to pinks and then we've got shades of red and also a kind of orange to red heat map. So various different ways of visualizing the data as well as accessing different data sources and statistics. So that's mode number two, that's statistics mode. I'm just going to press enter one more time and go into mode number three. And this is MEP mode. So by pressing enter brings me back down to the ground and we're now able to explore the different MEPs representing various countries within the EU Parliament. So I'm just going to press control to shift my viewport over to the left and you can see that in the middle of my screen I've got a little target and what this allows me to do is to have a look at each of these little people here and that's going to tell me about every single member of parliament currently sitting in the European Union. So right now we're in Portugal looking at the various different members of parliament here. We can look around the map over in the distance here we've got Spain and all the Spanish MEPs 
over in the distance we've got France and I'm just going to head over here see if we can find some recognizable faces so you can see here with France very large number of MEPs over towards the center around the capital we've got a lot of these with the the blue heads so the color coding indicates which parliamentary group they belong to so we can see here these with the blue heads belong to the EPP group and if we look at one of these people at random we've got information about the country they represent the percentage of the vote that their party got in the last election in 2014 and the number of seats in the parliament that they won in that election just gonna head over here to Belgium see if we can find a familiar face and ah, oh, there we go so this chap is fairly well known within the EU Parliament he's representing Belgium he's part of the ALDE group his party in Belgium won 22.7 percent of the vote at the last election and they currently have six seats in the Parliament there's a huge number of MEPs to have a look at on the map so you can go and explore your own country's representatives if I zoom out a little bit I can go back to third person view I can zoom out a little bit further to get a view from above and this also gives me a very nice visualization of just how many MEPs are representing each country so you can see here Germany with a large number of MEPs Poland also quite a large number and then just here some smaller Central European states with fewer MEPs representing them and of course here these these countries the uh, Balkan states which are not members of the European Union do not have MEPs on the map just gonna go back up above and back down to the ground so that is MEP mode where you can explore the different people currently representing each nation within the EU Parliament All right, I'm now going to press enter one more time to go into mode number four, which is candidate mode. So this allows you to explore the candidates who are in the running for the next EU election taking place this year. In this version of the app, we only have candidates currently shown in the United Kingdom. And as you can see, once we head over to the UK, the map itself has changed. So now you can see the boundaries between the different constituencies. The UK is one of the few countries that, that still um, elects members to the European Parliament on a constituency system. I think the others would be also Poland, Ireland and perhaps one other. Um, so looking around the map here you can see each of the constituencies represented within the UK. And if I change my viewport and then look at one of these people I can see the the party that they represent you can see the constituency that they're representing and also the candidates who are in the running for the election so here we can see in Scotland the six candidates for Liberal Democrats six candidates for Labour and heading towards the south in the northwest of England we've got eight candidates for the Green Party eight candidates for the Conservatives down towards the south and in London so you can spend a bit of time exploring the map and seeing what candidates are in the running for the next election so that's the fourth mode candidate mode I'm just gonna press enter one more time to take me to mode number five which is geography mode and this is the mode that we first started in so geography mode allows you to explore the map freely and to see all of the major settlements and capital cities around Europe and the surrounding countries I'd just like to show you a few other little features so if I zoom out to third person mode we can also change the color of our avatar it's purely cosmetic but you can customize the look of your character you can also switch on and off the little mini map in the right hand corner just so you can get a better view if you wish and full instructions and controls can be accessed by pressing the I key for more information so here we can see details about what each button does so the shift key changes the camera view from first person to third person 
to bird's eye view and then to an overview of the map. The control key changes the information display, so the right hand panel shows information about your mode. The left hand panel shows the statistics that you're looking at and then you can also close both of those panels. Space key allows you to jump and with all of these controls we've also got details about the equivalent for using a gamepad. Second page of the instructions we've got the five different modes from left to right country mode, statistics mode, MEP mode, candidate mode and geography mode. Just pressing enter to cycle through those. We can see that by pressing alt or option on a Mac this will change the statistics that are shown in statistics mode. And then the other keys that we can use. B will open up your browser and this will take you to a different page depending on what you're currently looking at. C will change the color of your avatar. M will show and hide the minimap. I will bring up these controls that you're looking at now. Tab will change the color of the data visualizations on the map. Delete key will put you into idle mode and escape key will allow you to exit the application. There's a little bit of detail here about the company who have made this piece of software. Uh, it's information.com if you would like to find out more. So that's information with a one and a zero. You can also send us an email, contact at information.com. We're open to collaborations with various people and if you would like to see a demonstration version of this app or if you would like to produce videos, content, screenshots or podcasts using this application, please get in touch with us. We're interested in helping to spread understanding about the European Union, but also about just about any other topic. If you'd like to commission a piece of data visualization or mapping from us, or if you'd like to collaborate on a project, please just get in touch. Thank you for watching this video. Um, there are a few more details in the description, plus details of how you can get in touch with us or find out more. We're going to be developing new versions of this software and releasing those in the near future. So we're going to be expanding upon the statistics that are available as well as representing the new members of the European Parliament in 2019. And we're also going to be adding some new features to make it more engaging and accessible, especially to younger people, but also to people of all ages. And we're going to be adding some gameplay elements to make it more fun and motivating and to give people tasks that will allow them to explore and learn about uh, the European Union. Please check out the description, like and follow us to find out what we're doing next. And please sign up to our newsletter to find out more whenever news becomes available. Thank you. Bye-bye.